Do you know why the snow is cold and chilled? Do you know why the fire's hot and thrilled? Would you know either if you didn't know the other? Do you know of the Jelly Brothers and Sisters, all without father, all without mother? Snow fell once, heavy and deep. It melted away, and there they all lay. They were young, maybe four or six or eight, ready to start fresh with a nearly clear slate. They had but some objects there at their side. A book of the laws of the Yuletide, a solar-powered CD player with Christmas greatest hits, and much more held dear by the gang of misfits. And all this, said the narrator. Years went by. The siblings never found out from whence they came, but that mattered not to them all the same. One fine day they would gather in a ring, for the daily carol they would sing.
tree before my spirit falls again. Fill up the stockings. I may be rushing things, but let the hose again now. For oh, we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Candles in the window, carols in the spinning. Yes, we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Hasn't snowed a single flurry, Santa dear, we're in a hurry. Slide <laughs> down the chimney, turn on the brightest string. Rockin' along the Christmas tree, have a happy holiday. The Kennedy! The laws of the Yule Tide state to sing the same song once a day. The law doesn't say we should all sing the same. I'm hungry. Can we just go on the hunt? Fine. We shall go on the hunt. You see, the Jelly Brothers and Sisters, for nourishment of course, would thrice a week catch French pastries while running through the forest. Whether croissants, macaroon, or eclairs, the children would team up and chase them in pairs. This is how it should be. How have you survived so long on your own? I have done better on my own than I ever have under Burkinelli's laws. Well, then why did you return? I met a man in the woods. His name is Krampus. He was an elf or a creature, maybe. He told me that Burkinelli was lying to us and we are supposed to read the Book of Samhain. Please, spread the word. It must be known. We have to read this book. Please. Fantasy is telling us the truth and Burkindley has been lying to us. And he would never have us lie to him, so why should he lie to us? Or Krampus is lying to her, you and me. And if that's the case, he's using us as means to some unknown goal. Look, Burkindley may have lied, but what's worse is that we may have lost our freedom from reading the Book of Samhain. We ought to tell the others. But not Burkindley. He would not approve. If Burkindley asks me, I will tell him the truth. Kennedy, Kennedy, of what do the two of you talk in hushed tones? We saw our sister Rusanasi. She told us that the Book of Samhain that you have outlawed is meant to be read, and she told us Krampus told her so, and that we should go and speak with Krampus. Have you been lying to us, Burkinelli? Now, now, allow me to interject. You see, I did not come up with these laws of the Yuletide. They are not mine, but they were passed down to us. And we will follow the traditions that were passed down to us. Who are you of such little intellect that you think you're smarter than these laws? I don't know. I've, I've heard a lot of scary stories about Krampus. I know they're fables, but they're meant to protect us. What if Rusanasi was right and our laws of Yuletide were wrong? I want to make my own decisions. All this time I've been obeying everything Burkinelli says. But I can make my own decisions. I have reason. 
I say we vote on this matter we never had a chance to discuss. And if there's one thing that I'm bent on, one thing you can bet on and give your assent on, what my time is spent on, I plan to present on. If you choose to let on, to let me vent on, I seek your consent on. This matter I've went on. What I am upset on, that I have no vote on, a little clear quote on, the laws that were made for all of us. Again, equality for all. Raise your hand if you believe we should be able to see Krampus and say I, 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 we have the majority. Vote? You speak as if laws were a matter of math. Why would you frivolously choose your own path? We will stay here. We will be ruled by you no longer. We have chosen freedom. Now, while I did support the vote, to go and see Krampus. I did not think I can support a rebellion, but I do bid the all farewell. Thus, the jelly siblings were divided in two. Lurkinid evil Tanley and Miltinami withdrew from the Burkinley Canipity Dickinnessy crew. Each for their own reasons, each had a view. And from this point, what would ensue, here will be given a short preview. What each had thought he or she knew was in fact a bit askew. Each thought the others to lack a clue, but of their own thoughts made no review. When in fact what would prove true is to discern what holds value. The wrong removed, the right accrued. To continue to be to get close to. Never to perfect, but to proceed to pursue a wider window by which to look through. Who, however, would choose this to do? Now on with the plot with no more ado. The children were split the entirety of the night. The new day began and on went their plight. Four years time had passed and the siblings knew not. Why their surname was Jelly, they gave it no thought. Now things became oh so much clearer as Rusanasi's body grew oh so much nearer. Each sibling leaked a jelly flavor unique, with a taste so delicious that interest it piqued. Oh, grape jelly. Whoever did this is pure evil. Where were you when I needed you? Krampus attacked me. He wants to end us all. The only reason he didn't finish me is because he doesn't like the taste of grape jelly. Ah! I could really use a few figs right now. Brothers and sisters say that you're dangerous. I, I couldn't help you. No, oh, it was your sister, the one with the mask on her face, who did this to me. Oh, child. I'm going to help you. It's okay, sir. Don't, don't worry. I, I made this mixture and it will help your hand. You won't have to worry. You're an angel. It'll make you feel much better, I promise. Oh, thank you, child. You see, they villainize me, but I am not bad. Tell me, have you ever heard of the Book of Samhain? I've heard of it, but I don't care much for it. Thank you, child, for the medical attention and for the meal. You're welcome, but what meal? <laughs> I mean, what did you guys expect? Stuff like this happens. All you gotta do is work your own land and mind your own business. How am I ever supposed to prove what's right if I don't stand up to evil and say no to it? I'm gonna say no 
to Krampus. Apple. Two of us have already been killed. We need to warn the others. The kennedy has been gone for much too long. It concerns me. Ringing. The watch goes off. It's time for our daily carol. We must begin. First comes a little girl. Oh dear Santa, fill it well. Give her a doll and a lapse. Guys, guys, Milton me and Rusanis have been killed. Compass is coming. We have to go now. Hurry. Shh. Please. Allow me to speak. You run off in the name of some sort of liberty, but tell me, what is liberty without wisdom? For the laws of the Yuletide warned us of this Krampus, warned us of the Book of Samhain, but yet you go running amok. I tell you, I am here to help maintain order and structure. That's what these traditions are for. Without them, without the Book of the Laws of the Yuletide, we would have fallen apart years ago. So I beg thee, just follow what has been set before us and trust that it will guide and protect us like it has done in the past. Now, there's no time to leave. For every day we sing our daily carol. And that time of day has come, so we will gather together and we will sing for the name of the laws of the Yuletide. We don't have time for that, Burkinnelly. Vultanelli, Lock Kennedy, grab stuff. We have to leave now. Knippity, you're right. Let's grab our things and go. Fine. Well, you do what you please, but I will stay here and stand strong and sing. Nippity. I think we lost it.
jelly children, I smell you near. You have no choice but to appear. Are you here? He's asking if we're here. I must tell the truth. No. Yes, Why? he's asking. What? I will tell the truth, okay? I will always tell the truth. Nothing else matters. In moments like these, moments like these are when, when it matters most. When no one else will tell the truth, I will. No, it's I am here! We have to give Krampus a chance. Krampus, do no harm to your fellow mankind. For equality you will find, a community of nature you have been designed, for liberty. Stop. At this point, I really don't care anymore. Just just let me do what I want. Let me read from the book of Samhain, and then I'll go willingly. You can eat me. And thus was the end of his mission. And thus was the start of his state of contrition, a creature void of any sense of moral feeling, now busy by remorse of which he was dealing. How could he have done the evils he did? What motives inside him had the action bid? Krampus, remorse, asked forgiveness. <gasps> Forgive me! He was struck by the swiftness of the blissness he witnessed. The sky illuminated, the elf elated, a voice dictated. By what you have demonstrated, you have been deemed consecrated. He recalls the jelly flavors, taste so vividly savored. Apricot plum, boysenberry, 
grape, peach apple, strawberry. Distinguished as tangy, sweet and tart, Krampus's palate began to impart. Some flavors he revisited to see what things like grape elicited. The elf now comprehended the mix of flavors blended. While the assortment was often contrary, Krampus was cautious and wary to choose the truth primary. Perhaps he was improved having tasted all, despite the fate that had to befall the children of jelly from small to tall. The consequences deadly for a jelly fruit medley. Baby Jesus, he's the king.